experiencing those, please pay great attention and give him homestead respect. And then we'll have another speaker here after his presentation, and then we will get you on your way. So get everything you can up from these two presentations today, okay? All right, Mr. Barry Strzok. focused on getting themselves a technical certificate before they graduate high school. So early college model is focused dual credit. I also see, oversee a high school recovery program called ICAP and work with students that want to have a different high school experience, finish their high school diploma on our campus and then transition to post-secondary. I also oversee all our dual credit uh, enrollments as well. So just to give you an idea, that's over 4,500 students that we enroll through dual credit. That's an unduplicated, that's per head. We have over 52 agreements and lots and lots of credential teachers. So that's kind of what I do. My goal today was just to have an opportunity to share with you what is dual credit. How many of you are currently taking a dual credit class? Nice. Good job. So some of you are just as probably familiar um, information. I think you probably have like Project Lead the Weight or Biomed or um, in Engineering. I think they're your two dual credits you can take as a freshman. So what is dual credit? What's dual credit? Anyone? Yes. Taking a high school class and getting college credit for it. Does that sound right? Thank you very much. So it is actually it's focused dual credit. So with, with that high school class, you can earn both a college credit and a high school credit. That's dual credit. So if you have opportunities to take dual credit or look at opportunities for dual credit, make sure that you do that. So what else? It's taught by an Ivy Tech credential high school teacher. So when you guys think about dual credit, it's actually the physical space. So when you're taking a dual credit class here at Homestead, your physical space is your high school. But actually, you're technically enrolled as an Ivy Tech or a college student. You can also take um, dual credits from IPFW. You'll be an enrolled college student taught by a college credential teacher. Now, you might think that's just my high school teacher, but actually, they go through a rigorous credentialing process. They've done things outside of what their um, normal degree might be. They become credential. They just have a master's degree in their content area. They receive um, credentialing uh, worksheet through uh, IPFW or Ivy Tech to be a licensed Ivy Tech teacher. So you're actually an Ivy Tech or an IPFW student taught by an Ivy Tech or an IPFW teacher. But your physical space is here at Homestead and it's called high school based dual credit. Experience, you can experience what a college course would be like. So you can really get an idea of what is the rigors. What would it be like to actually take a college course? So having a dual credit class really gives you that experience. Help prepare you for your college and career. Benefit. How many like to save time and money? Absolutely. Why not, right? So saving time and money. So getting dual credit helps you get a jump start on your college career. Some of you might want to go into the workforce. Some of you might think that you just want to go and get a good paying job. Some of you might think that you really want to go on to a two-year or four-year degree. Whichever plan is best for you, go for it. Having dual credit helps you get that degree sooner and faster. Discover your college major or career sooner. It's free. The one thing it's that um, you can have a deep, uh, delayed expense in paying for college. Ivy Tech credits happen to be free, so you can give you college credits for nothing. And you can save a lot of money. So saving time and money allows you to be able to get a jump start on what you think you want to do. It allows you to explore options. Why would you not take advantage of something that's free? Explore as much as you can in high school to figure out what direction you want to go prior to going out there and actually doing it. I am a living example of what not to do. 
I took a four-year college degree and cranked it into seven. It took me seven years to finish my high school or my college degree. Reason why? I had no idea what I wanted to do. I just came out, I tried, and instead of trying it in high school, I tried it in college. Paid for it. They better have student loans. Student loans, student debt, absolutely. So that's what I had to do. I had to pay off your student loans and student debt because it's taking, instead of taking four to five years to get my college degree, it took me seven because I was trying to figure it out along the way. I transferred colleges and changed my major four times. I went from a pre-med student to biology to athletic trainer to end up getting into education. I was a basketball coach for 16 years. I taught health and physical education in careers classes. Then I ended up, long story short, I ended up at Ivy Tech. So I took that to say, you can have a jump start, you can figure out what you really want to do, figure that out now, explore as many options as possible while you're in high school so you have a really clear focus of that lens of what you want to do, either get into a career or get into college once you leave here after your four years. These are all the dual credit classes. I apologize in the back, it's a little small, but I want to kind of give you a sense of all of your options here at Homestead. So there's 28 Ivy Tech dual credit classes, as well as 13 IPFW courses that you can have experiences with. Look at that list, look it over and think, huh, what might be interesting to me? Where, where would I see myself in the next four or five years after high school? Have some experience, take a dual credit class and see if that would be something that's right for you. Also, those of you that might be more career focused, those of you that think, um, for like me, one of my loves, if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be working on cars or working in real estate. My dad was in construction, and uh, my first car was a 1968 Chevelle. So I changed engines, I worked on cars, um, I built houses, I've done a lot of different things. If I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be involved in a career like this, where I'd probably be in automotive or in construction technology. But if you see that as something that you're really interested in, you have those dual credit opportunities at the Career Academy in Memphis. You can go into automotive, criminal justice, culinary arts. The best picture I can probably paint for you is this. Imagine that if you are as a junior or senior, go and take dual credit at, at, at Amphis. You can come out two years ahead of people who didn't do that. And imagine who people like Evans Toyota, Ben Davis, those people, who do you think they want to hire? They want to hire somebody who has two years of experience or somebody with no experience. Think about the leg up that will give you in, the, in, in getting a job. Not only that, but you'll be highly credentialed. You'll be sought after. I've known students that I've worked with that have um, went through the this automotive program or construction program, got a highly certified, got certification, got credentialed, and was able to go out and get a good paying job right out of, as soon as they graduated, right out of high school, making several dollars more than students that didn't have those experiences or credits. Homestead offers 28 dual credit classes in what's called the core library. Two things I want to kind of throw at you. One is called the General Education Core Library, and there's also a thing called the GETC Certificate. So let's talk about the library. The library, you have 23 from Ivy Tech and 5 from IPFW. What that core library allows you to do is you're able to take those classes, and those credits earned are transferable to all Indiana public education. So what does that mean? As you're taking dual credit, think in terms of getting, maybe, maybe for you, you're, you're interested maybe just wanting to kind of have a general overall, overall broad scheme of your dual credit. Maybe you're not necessarily focused in business, or maybe you're not focused in engineering. You just want to be able to see how many dual credit classes can I get to get as far down the road with my college career before I leave here. With that being the case, the GETC, the, the Transfer Core Library, is where you want to be. Talk to your, talk to your academic advisor, to your guidance counselor, and say, look, I really should be transferring to maybe a four-year school or a two-year school. How many credits can I get to give me that jump start? Thinking about the core library, make sure that those dual credits are taking count towards earning your academic honors diploma or technical honors diploma. So that's important as well. Think in terms of what diploma am I interested in going for and how do those dual credits help me get to qualify for that diploma, but also working towards getting what's called the General Education Transfer Certificate, GETC. So figuring out, making sure that you focus we have what's called random acts of dual credit. Don't be random. Be very focused and intentional on what you want to take when you want to take it. The GETC. So working on the core library, you have also what you can do is called the transfer certificate, the technical certificate. So these classes are designed for students who plan to transfer your Ivy Tech or IPFW credits to a four-year college. Imagine that formula right there, that second bullet point. It says, earning a minimum of 30 credits from the general education transfer core equals a technical certificate, which equals a year of college. 
And imagine if you were to come out of Homestead High School with one year of college already done. How many think that'd be pretty cool? How many think your parents would be pretty excited to save them a whole year of college tuition? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So think in terms of that. From the GETC, think of focusing on those transfer core library classes. If you focus that, be very intentional, starting your sophomore year, start taking those classes that are in that core library. Focus on getting 30 credits. If you get 30 credits on the transfer core, it equals a technical certificate. That's a college diploma. Through Ivy Tech, we have top technical certificates in a wide range of programs. Students who get a technical certificate are highly qualified and certified to go out and get a job, or to take those credits and transfer them. Ivy Tech will sign that certificate. You can take those credits to any four-year public institution and they accept those. No question that. The Higher Learning Commission negotiated that. Those are credits that you can take a transfer. So imagine coming out of Homestead. You've already got a year of college done. Instead of some of your other classmates that don't have dual credit are taking four to five years to finish, you're already a year ahead of them getting into the workforce, earning a salary a year sooner than they are, making some money, and having, uh, having a different experience than other students that didn't have that. So what does it mean? During your college, um, you can earn uh, your first year of college in high school, all those dual credits will transfer, you can graduate faster, and as we've already discussed, saving time and saving some money. Those are all the schools that you currently are probably uh, real, are recognized as schools that you participate in the, that transfer course certificate, that technical certificate. Those are schools that you can take those credits and transfer to. I do want to say one thing too. As you're planning this, if you find that somewhere along the way maybe you come up with a few credits short, maybe you don't have the 30 by the time you graduate your senior year, you could, go, you could go to like an IPFW or come to Ivy Tech. You could get, we can help you take one or two of those classes like in the summer to finish up to get that certificate to be able to transfer that then in the fall to that four-year school that you want to be going. So don't think that, wow, if I didn't get them all done in high school, you still have opportunities to get those classes to be able to get that transfer certificate or that technical certificate. So what to get started. So what do you do? First thing is get a plan for your college or career. How many of you already have a plan about the next three years, four years, five years, six years? How big is your plan? Five-year plan? Six-year plan? Four-year plan? So just getting through high school? Um, I'm sure you probably worked with your college career readiness, Ms. Cisco. She talked to you guys about you guys in ICE, Indiana Career Explorer. Some of you have seen here, not in that. So I kind of look at it this way. Winners focus, non-winners spray all over the place. Winners focus. How do you be focused? Make sure you have a plan. Figure out what you want to do. Even if the plan isn't what you really end up doing, at least have, just have an idea. Don't be random. Don't be all over the place. Be very focused and intentional with your high school. You only get four years, folks, to do this right. You get four years. You've already gone through one semester. You have one semester left of your freshman year. So really, you guys are like sophomores. You should be thinking about what am I going to do and be very personalized and intentional on my sophomore year. If you, get, if you get high school right, the rest of it really fits in. It really does. Work with your college career readiness coordinator, Ms. Cisco. Learn more about your career options. Talk to your guidance counselor. Determine what dual credits class and classes are best for you. Knowing where you want to be. Have an idea of where you want to be at the end. How do I then connect those dots from where I'm at right now? How can I save myself some time and money? How can I be very focused and intentional to have where I want to be at the end of high school, be where, be a launching pad, be that, be that uh, jump start for you going into your career of college. Stay on track with your English writing, English reading, writing, and math courses. It's critical for that. Stay on track with your English reading, writing, and math courses. And I'm sure you probably hear that a lot, and make sure you earn those credits. Everybody understand? It's interesting because I worked with freshmen a lot. I mean, I was in charge of freshman academy with four week community schools for about eight years. And it's interesting to know when freshmen come in, you just don't, because in middle school, you didn't really have to earn credits. Does everyone understand what a credit is? The importance of earning that credit. You have to have a certain amount of credit to be able to move on to that next year. And I tell you that because it's, it's critical that you get that to be able to persist, be able to push through, even though a high school, um, Dual credit class might be more rigorous, it might be more challenging. You're going to be asked to step out of your comfort zone and really push yourself academically. Don't quit. Persist. Figure it out. That's what you're going to be asked to do out there when you don't, um, when you're out there in college doing those things on your own. But don't quit. Earn that credit. Get those dual credits. Do your best to score well in your PSA and, and your acting places. So if you go into your sophomore year and you're looking to take your PSAT, 
as well as taking a vacuum placer, those two will determine whether or not you're called what's called college ready. If you score in a certain range, if you score well in those tests, if you take them seriously and do well, you'll be able to call, if you score in a certain area, you call what's called program or college ready. When, you, when you're in that area or that range, that allows you to be able to earn that dual credit. So being college ready gets, gets allowed you to be able to earn that credit. Some students don't take the PSA or SAT seriously. Some students don't earn their English or their math scores. And even though they might be in a dual credit class, they don't get to earn the credit at the end because they didn't do what they need to do on there. So make sure you do that. Have a plan, be focused, stay in track with the English, reading, and writing, math courses, and do well when those tests come up. It'll allow you to be able to, again, look towards earning those credits, those dual credits. So if you have any questions, one of the things that uh, we just added on part of my team um, is what's called a dual credit academic advisor. Her name is Taya Fordanish. Taya's gonna be your dual credit academic advisor. She will be um, here to be able to assist, ask questions, or for you to ask questions of, be able to give you guidance, working directly with your guidance counselor to help you understand the role that dual credit plays in your um, high school career, but also what that role is gonna play as you go forward. So, right on time, I got, a, I got some swag up here. Anybody have any questions that you might have? Yes, sir. Yes, it's a great question. Stick your hands out. Flash type for you. So the question was, do, do kids graduate actually with those 30 credits at the end of their high school career? Yes, they do. It's a matter of just making sure that you're focused and intentional. You need to be starting now. Some of you that already raised your hands and said you have dual credit, you are already on track. Some of you that don't might think, huh, leaving here, hopefully you at least think, man, I want to check this dual credit thing out and see if I can't get a, a leg up on that next step. If I can get some cre college credits out of the way now, start early, get them free, be focused and intentional, it's going to help you move further down the road. But absolutely students do. They can't get that, that transfer, that technical certificate by the end of their high school grade. Yes? For how much is the cost of what? Depends on the school. So, um, like with Ivy Tech, our college credit is $133.15 a credit. So for a general, like typical three credit hour class, you're looking at, um, plus a technology fee and some other things, you're looking to write about $400, including the textbook, depending on the course that you're taking, between four and $500 for a college credit at Ivy Tech. I kept doing these, and most of the other four years, they're going to be a little bit more than that. So I'm a lot more. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Great question. So the, the question was, if you take a course in the summer, how long would it take? It depends on which course you're signing up for. So with at, say at Ivy Tech, if you wanted to take a couple college credits at a decreased cost and be able to get them done sooner, we have courses that are eight weeks, we have courses that are 10 weeks, and we have courses that are 12 or 16 weeks. So it just depends on which course you want to sign up for and how, how intense you want to be. In the summer, it's nice because you could probably do an eight week course and get a college class done in eight weeks. You would go more frequent, the frequency, frequency and duration would be more. But imagine instead of sitting in the class for 16 weeks, you'd be done in half that time, eight. Would you be willing to go instead of one day a week or twice a week, you go three or four times a week, a little bit longer, you'll get it into So it just really repairs. But you can definitely get a college credit, a couple of them done in the summer. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Yes, we got time for one or two more. I think your question was, do all credits transfer to all colleges? Yes, yes, um, they will, especially from that core library. So if you focus on that core library, taking those college credits from there, whether you get the 30 or not, as one of the students asked earlier, if you get those 30, that's great. If you don't, those credits will still transfer. The idea of getting those 30, getting that certificate, is that you have a technical certificate. That equates to a full year of college. So that's what we're really telling you to focus, and if you really do it right, you can get those 30 credits done before you graduate, get that technical certificate, because that we know is a full year, and we know all those credits will transfer. Great, any other questions or comments? 
I'll be here for a few more minutes. I think you guys are gonna stay here. I'm gonna wrap this up. If you wanna come up and ask me some more questions, those three questions I got, if you would come and see me, I got some stuff for you, got some gear for you. They will tell you questions. Feel free, you guys have been a great audience. I appreciate it. Come ask me questions if you have any. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. Uh, I've been in the construction industry for 45 years. Uh, started out as a project laborer. Uh, moved, moved from a project laborer to a, to a, up to a carpenter. Uh, went from a carpenter to a, to a superintendent. Decided that I was getting old and tired and I needed to go inside, so I went back to school and got a degree at Purdue. Uh, moved into the office. Went into estimating project management sales and ended up opening my own construction company uh, which i sold to a young man about a year uh, a little less than a year ago so i'm uh, a couple ways of, a couple years away from retiring i signed a contract to stay there and help him transition the company over so um, some of the projects that i've built uh, this is the Uni university of st francis it's their football stadium uh, I met coach Donnelly before he ever had his first football team football helmet or anything he had no stadium uh, met him in a, in a restaurant, and he had a napkin in his hand, and he said, hey, I want to build a football stadium, and I've got a bunch of people that want me to make an award-winning team. So today, uh, state of the art, we all know about what Kevin Donnelly's done in St. Francis. Um, after we did the uh, football field, he brought enough kids to school with recruits from football that we went over and built a, a residence hall that sits on, ba on uh, Bass Road and uh, I think it's Leesburg, right across from the, uh, the uh, fire station there. Um, after we finished that, uh, Sister Elise was on a roll and she decided she was going to buy Lutheran Hospital's nursing uh, program. So she bought that and built a nursing school uh, over at the other end of the campus. Um, after we finished, oh, I missed a slide, but that's okay. You guys probably all seen some of this. This is. Uh, uh, Sky Zone, the indoor trampoline park. Anybody been there? Sure. Thanks. You're helping pay for my house. Um, no, we built the one here in Fort Wayne for the people that own it. Uh, after we finished the one in Fort Wayne, we went over to Toledo and built another one. and just opened one two months ago in Mishawaka. Uh, looking at uh, one in Indy right now. They're uh, one of the, I think it's the ten fastest growing franchises in the country. So it's been it's been an experience and fun. So. Uh, probably been on Sky Slam. They got a new one coming out now that actually has a hoop at each end and you play one on one. Um, I think it's it, it's better to just two parts somewhere. Opportunities in the skilled trades. Uh, there were 13,000 jobs created in the 13,000 construction jobs that will happen in the next two decades. There's 2,500 of those jobs right here in Fort Wayne or Northeast Indiana, I should say. Uh, construction is projected to grow by 19% or 17% will create over 1,900 jobs. 20% of the people that are in the field today, tradesmen that are in the field today, are my age or close to retirement. Uh, we're losing people right and left. When I got out of school, uh, the thing you did was you either went to work at Harvester, you went to college, or you went to the trades. Probably 40% of the kids that went out and got out of college went into the trades, and that was in the 70s, so now they're retiring. Uh, my cousin just retired a year ago. They're, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. We're, we're in dire straits for people. Um, the average construction wage in Northeast Indiana is 55000 plus dollars. The average job, or the average all the jobs, there's around 47,000 in Northeast Indiana. So you can see we have a pretty lucrative uh, uh, business that we you can make money in. There are the, the nice thing of it is you go to college, you, you go to college, you go to work in the construction industry. Somebody trains you, puts you in college, and you got no debt, and you start making money the first day you get out of high school. So you know it's something to think about. What kind of construction jobs are out there? First, there's a general labor, 
and I'm, you guys can see the dollars and cents, those are ranges. He's unskilled, works with the shovel, break, breaks out concrete. Uh, then there's a skilled labor. He's the guy that can maybe run a bobcat, run a cat hammer, do some other things, work a transit or a level that, that lays out the stuff. You got a carpenter, they're kind of the all around. That's what I started doing when I got out because I like the fact that you got to do lots of things. You put ceilings in, you do walls, you pour concrete, uh, hang doors, so it's a little more rounded, plus the opportunity as a, as a carpenter. You have the opportunity to expand and become a, most of, most of your foreman and your job site superintendents, which I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about later. They, they, they come out of the ranks of the carpenters. Uh, so you got that, you got uh, trowel tradesmen, there's cement finishers, brick, uh, brick layers and trowel trades. Um, got uh, iron workers, those are the guys that put the steel up that's above your head. Uh, Cheap metal workers are the guys that do the dump work that you see going around here. That's the heating system. Uh, glazing, uh, glass and glazing installers are the people that put the glass in, the glazing is the components that hold it in place. If you, I've got a friend right now that's up in New York City. He's building three high-rise. Uh, high-end home, high-rise high-end homes in downtown Manhattan. He was telling me the other day that the glazers on the job make $110 an hour. That equates to about a $200,000 a year job. Now, that being said, it's the most dangerous job in construction. So, there's, with risk come reward, I guess is what they tell you. Uh, flooring installers, the guys that put the carpet down or do the floors that you see, linoleum, different things. Painters, obviously, most of us know what painters are, they do the walls. Plasters, the guys that fix the walls. Kind of a dying breed, there's not very many people left in the plastering industry because there's not much plaster that goes in anymore. Um, plumbers, guys that put the plumbing in to make a restroom for it. HVAC technicians, you see, the more skilled the trade is, the higher the, the, the pay grade. So, as you, the more you need to know, and when you get into some of these, like from a plumber on, almost all of them need to be licensed, so you have to go take a, after you uh, finish your uh, apprenticeship program, you have to go take a, uh, a test in order to be qualified to do the work and have it inspected in the, in the counties and the states. So what do you need to be involved in the construction trades and apprenticeship? The apprenticeship program is a four year, and I think somewhere I lost the slide. The apprenticeship program is a four-year program, a five-year program that you go through, either through a, a, a trade organization, which would be a union, or you go to a contractor like us. We're, a, we're an open shop, uh, which means we're not a non-union company. Uh, we send you off to IV Tech and get you a two-year program. We put you on the job site with a journeyman to, to work alongside of for that period of time. With the, with the unions, they send you to school, they put you out in the field. So the whole time you're going through the program and, you, and you're doing your apprenticeship, you're learning and you're learning. So that's one of the nice things. Again, most, most of the programs, that, the education that you get, which is typically a two-year associate's degree, and Ivy Tech, who I think you guys maybe just got to talk to, Ivy Tech has probably 90% of the people that go through the apprenticeship programs go through Ivy Tech. Um, they, have, they have a very good program, and I think that you can actually use those credits, and I'm not 100% sure, I think you can go over to IPFW if you want to go on in the construction industry and do something different. So, um, to get a, to get your, during your two-year associate's degree, they'll teach you the basic math, which you'll need, um, blueprint rating, building layout, and really the basic process is all they're doing is teaching you some of the things that the other trades that you're going to work with do so that you know how your work complements theirs and which needs to go in first and how it needs to be done properly so that it effectively works when you're finished with the project. Uh, what kind of a career path do you have in construction? Well, if you decide to go out and be and work in the field, which means you're going to go out on a construction site and you're going to build a homestead of high school, which, what you would start out as an apprenticeship in a trade. You get your journeyman started. Uh, you may work yourself up to a project foreman. A project foreman is the guy that's out there with a half a dozen guys, and he's taking a half a dozen partners out and saying, okay, guys, we got to lay out all the walls for the office. Let's go in and get them made up and he's responsible for those people. 
So as your responsibility goes up, obviously your pay goes up, commensurate to the amount of work you do, uh, or, the, or the amount of uh, responsibility that you have. Um, from there, you can be a project superintendent. If you were building the Homestead High School today, you'd probably have four or 500 construction workers on this project. That way is responsible for all of the people in the field and, and, and all the projects uh, foremen that are out there. It's his responsibility to measure the quality, make sure that they're doing it within the budget, uh, make sure that, that, that they're operating safely. Um, so he's, he's really, his total responsibility is that entire job. And not just the people that work directly for him, but all the subcontractors, which are the people that the, the contractor that has the job is responsible for. So he's, his, his overall responsibility is for the entire project. Uh, what do you do if you want to go somewhere else and you, you say, hey, I, I, I got this, I went through this program, I, I don't really know that I like working out in the field. Well, I, I, I had that happen to me about 12 or 13 years into my career. I said, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this for the rest of my life. My knees hurt. Uh, the guy next to me is 62 years old and he's doing the same thing I am. I know he hurts, hurts a lot more than me, so I said, yeah, I'm going to take it in a different direction. I went back and went to IPFW, got my degree in construction management. Um, went into the, the, in the, I went into the office as an estimator. Uh, went from being the estimator to managing the entire estimating department for a, a large construction company to travel the country. Um, there, from there, you can, you can do a, a system project manager. Project managers and assistant project managers, like the superintendent in the field, their responsibility is the financial side, the bookkeeping, the things that happen in the office, office writing subcontracts, uh, getting the, the, make sure that the schedule is met, dealing with the owner on anything that might change during the course of the project. Um, from there, you can be, become vice president of the company. Uh, president of a construction company, or you can own a construction company, which is what I chose to do at the end of the day. So, what, are, what is an employee like myself looking for in a young man or a woman that comes out of the, the high school and wants to get into our field? What we need is somebody who's effective in communication, obviously. We all need to communicate, that's how we get things done. There's a lot of communication that goes on when you have four or five hundred people working out on a construction site. Um, computer technology skills, today everything has changed. Uh, used to be you could get by with a tape measure, a hammer, and a, and a couple other small tools, but about two years ago we bought what's called a total station. It's an automated uh, building layout system. What would it take in, when the homestead was built 20, 20 to 25 people to lay this building out? One man can take a total station, plug in all the coordinates for the, for the project, meaning every, every corner in this building, and all the lines that go with it, go out with this total station and lay a pin at every point for every door, every window, everything that's here, the curves, the elevations of them. So it's uh, quite a tool or expensive, but again, our, like anything else, our uh, technology is evolving into different things. The, today, the machinery that you use out on the job site that, that does all the uh, moving the earthwork, totally recognized. There's a guy sitting behind it, but there's a machine on the front of it right, telling it what the grain is and where it's going. Um, problem solving skills, obviously, that's very important because there's not anything you do in your life that won't have a problem. Uh, so we, we, get the, we get the same kind of things that happen every day out there. Organizational skills, you've got to be very organized to work in the construction industry. Lots of tasks have to happen, more tasks than uh, many other uh, things that happen. So we need those kinds of skills. We need mechanical aptitude. Um, if you can't turn a screwdriver, then probably can't use it. Um, or if you can't hit a nail, but you know, it, 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 there are some people that just don't have the ability to do that or the desire. Quality is one of the most important things in our business, so obviously we're looking for people who exemplify the quality things that they've done, the kind of papers they put out in school. Measurement abilities are, we, everything we do is a measurement. Print reading is, is probably not something that necessarily you're going to have immediately, but something you have to develop because that's what we build off of. And of course, safety is the most important thing there is. This is our business is 
probably the most dangerous business that's out there and probably the most deaths that happen every year in, in occupations. Most of them from falls, from people making mistakes and doing stupid stuff. But um, fortunately, I've gone through my career and only been on one project site that had a fatality in 45 years. So we're pretty, we're pretty safe and conscious out there. Um, where can you go to get more information about being in, in the construction? Um, Indiana Career Connect is what actually, if you're an unemployed person in Indiana, the state requires you to post your resume on Indiana Career Connect, and it tells you about the, and, and, and employers go there and post job openings and things. So we hired probably three or four people through uh, Indiana uh, Career Connect. So, and then made by me is part of what, what we're here for. We're, we're part of North, we work with Northeast Indiana Works, which is an organization promoting the trades and manufacturing. Um, we're, we're, we're formed into what a group called uh, Gateway Coalition, which is a group of us people that got together and said, hey, we really, really, really like to educate kids that there are things out there besides going to college and accumulating debt. You can come out of school and you can make a good living. Um, you know, like I said, the average construction worker is $55,000. Uh, there's a lot of people I know that went to college and don't make $55,000 in there. They're still trying to pay off their student loans. Uh, this is a, a drawing that maybe you guys are familiar with, and unfortunately the site with the name of it got cut off at the tennis court across the street. That they built over on uh, their uh, homestead road. I've been, I've been on the job uh, when it first came out. And uh, unfortunately, I came in the second. The second's never good in construction. Second's really never good in anything, but especially doesn't pay the bills. Um, anyway, this is the floor plan. Tells you the basic dimensions and measurements of everything, where it goes. Uh, so the, the, a, a carpenter would lay out a building off of this. Those are the, the things I was talking about with the total station you put in there. Although this building probably isn't big enough to justify a total station. Um, so this is the uh, upper floor plan, shows you the second floor. Uh, it was actually uh, in the area to look out over the tennis courts and the uh, two stairways to get out. Go ahead. Uh, this, these are elevations that would tell you the heights of the, of the building floors, what the exterior is made up of, what it looks like, what the demonstration of the windows and doors and things are. Um, so you can see what the building is going to look like when you're fi finished. If it doesn't look like that, Guess what? You got to do it over. So, uh, this is a wall section, or actually a building section. It's a cut through the building. It gives the guys out in the field the the, the different types of materials they're going to go in, uh, where where things go. Like on this one, you can see the masonry walls, where the brick stops on the exterior, and the tin starts. How the roof trusses are made, and where they bear, what the elevations and bearing heights are of the different floors. So these are again. But when I talk about blueprint reading, those are the prints that you're going to have to learn to read someday if you want to be in this. Uh, this was actually just, I think it was a viewing or a seating of uh, the place where the tennis players to sit so they didn't get wet. I don't even think they told me. I'm not sure though. So constructions, big, tall, and all kinds of different buildings. Um, you can build anything from a single story building to the highest height skyscraper in the world. Um, it's, it's got no boundaries. You can, once you learn a trade, you can go anywhere you want. It's not built any different here than it's built in downtown Manhattan or Las Vegas or, or in Dubai. They're all built identically. Uh, we all use the same tools. We use the same kind of things to build. All the materials are the same. Maybe not always the same caliber of, of people that you get to work with. Uh, some of the things are different. Some of the people are different. But just a, just a building I picked up. It, I didn't. Even, I wasn't even involved in it. But some of the things that can happen on the site. You can see how they get busy. Anybody? Any questions or things you want to know? Has anybody ever thought about being in the construction industry? Wow. Two, three. All right. Come up here. I'll sign you up. We'll recruit you ahead of time, right? No, great. What kind of what what were you thinking about? On the field side or in the office? Field? 
What, what trade? What trade? Have you thought about a trade, partner? What trade? What trade? Yeah. The only one is tool and die. Tool and die? That's the manufacturing side of it. Good. Anybody in the construction side of anything? Sheet metal? You know what? That's what I wanted to be when I was in, I, I think it was about 7th grade. I thought, man, I want to be a sheet metal worker. Never made it. Anybody else? Any questions? 